Hey, what's going on? I'm Matt from mastersketchup.com. And in this video, what I wanna do is show you how to create an accurate material takeoff with like costs, material costs, quantities, all that stuff using a premium extension called Quantifier. So this is an extension you can use with SketchUp Pro to add cost data uh, through a number of different methods. And we're gonna walk through that in this video. So if you've seen uh, some of my more recent videos, you know that I was planning on building a tiny office for myself to work in because I had to move out of my, my current office to build a nursery because we're having twins pretty soon. Um, but things changed because I found this office here uh, for, for a pretty affordable price, so I ended up moving here. But I thought it would be cool to kind of walk through the catalyst of what made me realize that this thing was gonna cost more than I uh, felt like it was gonna be worth to, to spend. Um, so if we ch check out the model, the reason I was able to figure this out was because of this extension right here called Quantifier. You can see if I select this, uh, everything here, it will show a price. So keep in mind, um, this model, is a work in progress. You can see that there's no siding, there's no roofing, there's no um, interior surfaces, there's no roof on it. Uh, and I was already at $5,300. And so I started, you know, at this point I was like, man, this thing is probably gonna cost somewhere around $10,000. And it just didn't make sense for me for a number of reasons. Oh, by the way, check this out. I got my, 3D base camp shirt on from Palm Springs. Uh, unfortunately, I don't know if you've heard, but the um, the 3D base camp that was scheduled for September uh, has been canceled because of uh, COVID. So hopefully next year we'll be able to to meet up at uh, at the next 3D base camp. That would be awesome. So let me go ahead and hide some of these uh, objects here, and kind of we'll build up from the beginning and I'll walk you through the entire process uh, that I use to, to kind of figure all this out. So the first thing was the, the trailer. So I bought this trailer um, on Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace for $800, which I thought was a great deal, but it needed, um, you know, tires and wiring and it needed to be sandblasted. Um, but the thing that's cool about Quantifier is you can add a just flat cost to any object in your model by using the object method here. So you just click on this button and whatever you have selected, it will enable you to add a line item. So this is just a flat cost um, that's basically just calculated on you know, however many copies of that object you have. So if it's a component, if you add a cost uh, to one component, all copies of that component will have that same cost associated with it as well. Um, so actually when I went to the Sandblaster, this was kind of the big thing that really pushed me over the edge. He was like, it's gonna cost $2,000 at least to get this thing sandblasted and painted. So let's go ahead and add that cost item. Um, so you just click the plus sign up here, and the, the first column here is kind of like your own personal cost code. If you have a cost code uh, template or system that you use, you can type that in here. And I'll just put in Sandblaster and a unit cost of $2,000, uh, which you know definitely didn't make sense because I could have bought a, a trailer um, for you know $2,800 that was like good to go. And you can add a waste percentage and tax uh, percentage as well. The waste percentage comes in handy when you're calculating materials, you know, like studs, where you know you're gonna have some cutoff and you, know, you can estimate a certain percentage of waste that you want to factor in with your, your, your prices. So if we click okay, and then click on this again, we can see that it reflects the the whole $2,800. So that's the first method that
that you can use Quantifier to assign costs to objects in your model. Now, keep in mind, um, so SketchUp Pro added these advanced attributes um, a few years ago. And so they do have a spot for you to put in a price, um, but you know the, the reporting functionality, you'd have to go to file, generate report, and kind of customize a report. And you can, you can use this feature. It's just, it's really limited because it's, it's not nearly as flexible as some of these um, additional features I'm about to show you with Quantifrot with Quantifier Pro. All right, so, um, you know, in reality, I should also throw in, you know, some tires and, and add some costs in with that. But when I started this model, I, you know, I just wanted to kind of get an idea. I had no idea how I was going to build this thing. So I wanted to kind of get that started before worrying about that. So I just kind of skipped that um, at the moment. All right, so the next thing I did was I added floor joists. Um, now, originally I had two by four floor joists in here, but I thought um, I would bump that up to two by six in order to just provide more volume so I could add more insulation. And so you can see when I select uh, this, this group, it's showing a calculated cost of $117.08. And for things like studs and joists, I used the layer method to assign cost. Now, obviously, um, you know, layers have been changed to tags. So the, the plugin or the extension just hasn't been updated yet, but I can show you how that works as well. So when you pull up the layer cost data window, you can click on this drop down menu to see all of the tags in your model and the ones that have the dollar sign in front of it mean that I've you know, assigned a cost calculation to those tags. So in this case, um, I created a special tag. Now, whenever I use Quantifier, I tend to create um, special tags with a pre uh, prefix. Um, so I use PR standing for pricing um, for certain objects. And so if I select the PR two by six spruce tag, we can see that I have this line item here. I use the cost code lumber to uh, description two by six spruce. And so the cool thing about the layer or tag cost data method is you can use a number of different uh, calculation methods. So you can calculate costs based off of um, length. So what it'll do is it'll, uh, the extension will look at the group or component and look at the longest um, axis. So it goes by, you know, it's oriented by the axis. So if we look at, for instance, this, um, this joist here, when I jump inside of here, we see the blue, green, and red axis. Now this is the longest length along the red axis. So it'll actually measure that distance and use that length in order to calculate based off of um, how you set up the line item here. But you can use uh, length, you can use square footage. Um, so this is great for like calculating uh, paint or siding or roofing. You can use uh, cubic feet, so volume, so, it'll, so it can calculate based off of the volume of the group or component. Um, and then it can also uh, calculate costs based off of weight. Now that obviously requires you to input a weight, um, a weight calculation. So you would need to know the weight of the material. So like maybe if you're using this to calculate the cost of concrete, you'd have to know what the weight of concrete is, plug that in here and uh, it'll calculate that for you. So in this case, um, I'm using length again. And what I did is I just went and priced out like uh, an eight foot two by six and then divided it up by eight and came up with a unit cost of 68 cents per foot. Um, actually, I think I might've used like a 10 or 12 footer in order to kind of average it out. And um, then I have a waste percentage and added tax in there as well. So now what happens is any 
group that is assigned uh, to that tag either uh, directly or by inheriting it from a parent, um, it will calculate based off of that tag. And so if we look at the subfloor, so I have some uh, Advantech uh, sheets here. So in this case, I used the material function to calculate the cost of, of these sheets of, of uh, plywood. So the way the material cost uh, data works is similar to the tag method. You have a list of all of the materials that are in your model. Now, a lot of these could probably be purged, but, um, and then at the top, it'll show you the ones that have been assigned cost data. So the dollar sign indicates that you've assigned cost data to it. So in this case, it's the uh, Advantech panel. And so I've set this up to be calculated based off of uh, square footage. So what the extension will do is it'll go through your entire model and identify faces that have that specific material applied to it. And then it'll create, you know, it'll calculate a cost for you based off of the total square footage. So if I look at the uh, component here, you can see that I only have that front face applied uh, with that material. Otherwise, you know, if I had that material on both sides, it would like double the count, uh, the, cal the cost calculation. And so I just went through uh, the entire model and just kind of built things up from there. So I added the uh, two by six studs and these again were uh, calculated on a, a layer or tag uh, cost data. Then we have insulation, which I think was calculated on volume. Got the roof framing, the roof, roof uh, sheathing. Now, I don't know if I went a little overboard with this, um, but you know, I wanted it to be really well insulated. And so what I did is I, I came up with or used a, a construction assembly that basically has your traditional framing um, underneath that's insulated with Rockwell insulation. And then I added a layer of sheathing and then four inches of rigid foam. And then it, there was gonna be another layer of sheathing on top of that. So. I know it probably added a lot of cost and, and actually on the exterior, I added a layer of uh, rigid uh, foam as well. So I know that kind of added a lot of cost to the project, but um, you know, if you're going to do it, <laughs> I felt like you got to do it right. You know, you gotta, you gotta build it, um, you know, to be nice and efficient and tight. Um, so, you know, I definitely could have saved some money if I hadn't done that but that's just the way I decided to, to put it together. So again, I, I kept working on um, you know, adding a bunch of different things. And in addition to being able to just kind of see pricing on the fly, you can also obviously create a report. So you can create a report of all your cost data, you can export it to CSV, and you can actually customize uh, the different types of reports that you generate. And there's a lot of, you know, customization that you can do here. And one of the things that's really cool is, you know, let's say you have uh, a certain type of project or type of product that you have in SketchUp that uh, is configured different ways depending on the project. Um, you can actually configure a, an Excel file that has all of your unit cost data in it, and you can link that to a model. So essentially you will use your spreadsheet to kind of maintain and update your um, your cost data over time. And then that can just be imported and linked to your models. So that way you're not starting from scratch every single time building up these, these cost calculations. You can kind of build it once in a spreadsheet and use that um, on multiple models. And the, the last feature I wanna tell you about, which is kind of cool is the cost inspector. So this will look at your model and uh, highlight in green or red, depending on whether or not uh, you have cost data assigned to those objects. So you can see here, 
I don't even have cost data assigned to like the the deck, uh, the little deck at the at the back of the trailer. So you know, again, this was a work in progress, so I didn't kind of finish this. But um, so it's it's a nice way to kind of go through the model and just double check that you've um, assigned costs to everything uh, that you intend to assign costs to. Oh, and there's one more thing that you can use to add cost data. So uh, the model button here will allow you to just add a generic um, cost item to the entire project. So maybe um, maybe you have permitting fees and just like general overhead costs that you want to add that aren't necessarily represented by a physical object in the model, this would be a great place to add those types of things. So if you're interested in checking out Quantifier, um, I am an affiliate and coincidentally, I just found out from Dale, who is the developer over at Mindsight Studios, that he's running a 50% off sale starting on July 20th and running until August 31st. So if you're watching this video uh, soon after it came out, um, you'll be able to take advantage of that. I have a link in the description below uh, for you to get that 50% off. And if you have any questions, leave a comment below. Um, I've been using this extension uh, quite a bit for a few years now, so I know uh, quite a bit about it. So if you have any questions about it, definitely leave a comment below and I'll try to help you out. And that's pretty much it for this video. So I will see you in the next video.